Well, hello. Once again, you have found a Texas Steampunk Connection. Broadcasting to you throughout the multiverse, Steamverse, from our various bunkers and airships. With me, as always, is Fax, Gentleman Adventurer. Hello, hello. <laughs> with me is Jack from Steam Chest. Hello. <laughs> and we have with us today, Master Blue Stocking from <laughs> Steampunk Dollhouse Podcast. So once again, we are here to talk oh, probably about Steampunk, most likely, because what this is about. Thank you for listening to the Texas Steampunk Connection. All right. Perfect timing. <laughs> Perfect timing. Look at that. Hello, Rita and Mick, who are already on the uh, on the stream. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Hello. We're all back together. Finally. <laughs> COVID won't keep us down. <laughs> well, yeah. So... <laughs> It's my turn to have COVID. <laughs> no. um, I've never had it. Thank you. I don't think. Well, the reason you're you don't have it is this: you're you're doing your like doctoral thesis thing, which they just have you like locked down in a library. <laughs> so, just the amount of bacterial and bacterial <laughs> stuff eating those books apart is just keeping the COVID from even entering the building. I was gonna say if you could see the filter. Never mind. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I changed my filter the other day. I'm like, good lord, it ate yeah. a dog. There's a reason I work from home right now. It looks like someone just like squeezed a dog through a vent yeah. shaft. <laughs> I swear, Lovely. German Shepherd's hair, man. It's it's almost yeah. as it's it's huskies aren't that bad. They just shed twice a year, and they don't shed it like between times. It's just like just, just kind of dump it. It's yeah. like you scared a parrot, and it goes. Poof, poof. Yeah. Meanwhile, well, I have a Brax, and I can comb him three times a day, and German. it doesn't, yeah. yeah. He's a big orange tomcat, doesn't matter. It just, <sighs> Yeah, so much I also harder. have a cat, and she likes to sleep in front of the vent, because I think it's cool with that air being pulled yeah. over. And so therefore, I'm just having to like, wipe the vent off. <laughs> before just the stuck. cat stuck to the vent. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had an air conditioner that, that would suck you in like that. Man. <laughs> I would put the like the danger in air intake stickers like in the Navy have on the side of the jets and things like we're warning jet wash. Did y'all see that laundry shoot ad that was going around a while back? That's like you throw the laundry at it and it sucks it in, but it's, it's like, like a bank shaft, except where it's it's positioned at a. Oh, bad, bad, bad. Height. Other things are going to go into that besides laundry, household pets. <laughs> Probably other things. It's it happened to be conveniently li- right below waist height. That's yeah. If you, had, I'll <laughs> let that thought go where it's going to. I mean, it's, they're all running through the house like throwing things at it, but I can just see a cat just <laughs> go because a cat is going to try to figure out what that thing is, and they're going to be gone. So <laughs> yeah, because it's like that big. Yeah, but you can't put anything wet in there. It's really weird. Yeah, I'll try to find yeah, it. It's an actual later. product and not a. No, it's real. It's a <laughs> suction dumb waiter, essentially. <laughs> Basically, yeah. You, but you can't put wet towels in there. It's like dry, slightly sweaty clothes. Someone saw really a weird. bank teller thing from yeah. like the 1980s with the suction tube and decided, I'm going to make a dumb waiter do that for my laundry socks. <laughs> it's like a, a solution to the problem. Yeah. I, my whole life not needing to suck my laundry. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, you know what? That doesn't sound half bad. <laughs> Hi, Lawrence. Hey, Lawrence. <laughs> you missed the laundry sucking. <laughs> I'll f- try you to find. Say he was missing it. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think anybody's missing that. <sighs> so it's it's real hot. Mm-hmm. Like the hottest week on record until next week, which yep. will break the record to this week. Uh, it's not even August yet. I know. ACs are dope going out. Power is going down, although so far it's it's been pretty good, but the threat is still looming. Well, well I heard I Austin was plumbing company. I heard Austin was having some problems though yeah. that there was flickers and people in certain neighborhoods losing power. Yeah, and air conditioners dying left and right. Yeah, good times. Good times. <sighs> yes. Ooh, that skunky smell. <laughs> but All the right. upside 
is COVID is also resurging, which comes with uh, fever. And when you have a fever, you want to be hot anyway. Oh, See, no. outside feels normal. <laughs> it's Just perfect. Take a cold bath. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it feels normal. I just think it's even worse. It's even hotter. It's just more sweat. I get the freaky oh, chills you walk, just being in the house. Oh, and man. you walk outside and literally out being outside is painful. Yeah. It's like walking into a rotisserie oven. It's perfect. Well, <laughs> it's perfect doing? flu Open weather. Open the windows. Open the windows, Thax. <laughs> I, I don't have to. three. <clears throat> I can throw off my blankets and my hats and my sweater. It's like, oh, this is normal. This is nice. And then heat stroke on top of the COVID. So just be careful, please. Oh, if, if this was dry air, he could literally walk outside and just like completely dissolve his nasal passages of all liquid. But the problem is, is we have like 80 billion percent humidity. And so is that actually like sweat or is that just you? Con condensing like a Coca Cola outside. <laughs> it's condensing because I was not sweating. Oh, exactly. No. That's my yeah. problem. It's like I walk outside and I'm just like a condenser. I, mean, I could I could literally become my own worka. Do you know what a worka is? No, but y'all think it's the no, it's a funny word, right? But no, it's this big like 3D printed thing tower of uh, wires that go up like this, and water vapor attaches to it and rolls down causing more condensation so it trickles so, so it it's all in your shoes water no it's actually a pool so this is like a big structure you build so you just have a Africa. pool of water around you all the time. it's it's literally they need to build these all over arrakis because they're ah, essentially okay. moisture moisture I, I've, I've seen these they, they are building them in the sahara yeah i want to oh, build okay. one in my backyard so i don't have to mow, i don't have to water my lawn with, with water <laughs> it's it's nuts because the fact that it's it kind of has this uh, snowball effect is one little bit of water gets on there and starts accumulating and as it goes it grabs the con condensation of the others and just rockets down with the rest of it. So. It's like watching um, spritzes of water on your windshield as one starts to go yeah. down it but it's rests with them. It's kind of like but, how why all the grass near your fence line is always nicer looking than the rest of your grass is because the water in the mornings the dew collects on there and then drips off. So this is just like someone just took a whole bunch of wire and just went like this with it, and twisted it. So anyway, they're really cool. Um, I've considered like joining the whole brigade of making those things just so I can have one. They, they have rule. Uh, they have instructions on making them. You yeah. can find instructions for anything. Actually, right now. actually, Lex and I, video. Lex and I actually would like to find a way of like creating a nonprofit organization to fund making those and getting them sent overseas. And uh, that would, I think that would be a freaking fantastic idea because just, there's not enough. And then after watching that, that documentary on whatever media streaming service it is, the kid who made the, the windmill, holy crap, that's very steampunk in its own right. And it's, it's a fantastic show, but, the whole like first half of the show is everyone's starving to death and people are fighting like this is horrible. But what are you talking kid, about, Jack? What are you talking about? Jack? Uh, okay, so oh, you know what? I don't know what the name of this thing is. That this is going to turn into my homework. Uh, and for those of you just joining us, welcome oh. to Texas Steampunk Science Connection. <laughs> is that going to be your homework? We could talk about drinking first. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. I'll, I'll look this up while we. Uh, okay. And Thax, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, I get to go first. Okay, Nyquil, just a glass I, of Nyquil. <laughs> I probably <laughs> should. Seltzer in it. But I, I've been wanting to talk about this for weeks before I got sick, and damn it, I'm going to do it. Okay, okay. <laughs> right, I, I am drinking the original number one cup, Pim's cup. <laughs> Why do you still Pim's cup? What? That doesn't look like a. That doesn't look like a cup. Well, it's uh, it's what it says. It's Number one cup. Well, it's obviously not yours. It's Pim's. I thought Give Pim's made tea. Well, it, this is, it tea is a liqueur alcohol alcohol in from it. Great Britain. So, of course, it's made of gin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh, yes. well, if you, uh, you throw an ounce of half of this into uh, a ginger ale or a ginger beer. Ooh. And it's very nice. It's very uh, bright it's, and summery. Does it open the passages? Yeah. <laughs> it cleans you out a little bit. 
probably not. That would be a bonus. Uh, but it's still it's it's a lovely drink. Uh, we used to enjoy them with Fabio when he was uh, traveling with us. Man. Uh, so uh, that's that's my recommendation for the week. I like I it. Like it. Oh, the whole week, as in like have one often. <laughs> I mean, Doctor's it is really orders. hot right now, so you know whatever you can do to help. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm sticking like my beer in the freezer just to keep it like you know. I, I wanted to almost have like go icy, a when little I slushy. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what are you drinking? Since you have the new, uh, well, the different. Oh, it's just um, I just put it in the glass. It's the Angry Orchard Strawberry Cider. Oh. Ooh, ooh, very, strawberry. very good. Speaking of drinks, though, while I was in New Orleans, I got to try absinthe. Not going to try it again. <laughs> I didn't think you, you you don't look like the person who would drink absinthe. I went to Mahogany Jazz Hall, and they had just tons of it. So I'm like, just whichever one is supposed to be the best one. And they had the whole the drip and the whole setup, and it's like this big. And I took that first sip, and I was just like... <laughs> And Matt didn't want to come near it because he doesn't. So I, he sniffed it and just backed away like a cat. He was like, <laughs> no. Yeah, so I finished my, my it whole, and got a gin and tonic. <laughs> my whole thing when it comes to absinthe is if you like Jägermeister, you're gonna like absinthe. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Well, people who like that I drank weird Jägermeister. Black, I don't know that I liked it. <laughs> that black licorice. See, flavor. I love licorice. It wasn't the licorice what? it was it wasn't the licorice it was okay. the fumes i felt like if you lit a match too close to my face i was going to catch on fire there was just well, the alcohol that was just <laughs> okay okay you're the, this is the first time i've run into someone who was not immediately repulsed by the fact it tastes like licorice i love licorice it's one of my favorite <laughs> so, things i always pick my, out the yeah so Black obviously my thing is like don't drink yeah. if you don't like licorice no i do and if you like licorice you're gonna love it like my mom loves licorice and so I got her some Jaeger, and she thinks that thinks she, that's the, the best stuff ever. And I'm actually considering getting her a bottle of absinthe for, for for Christmas because she also likes, you know, I think she would like that. But so it was the the amount of fluff the Yeah, I mean, it was just that. Like I said, it was the alcohol fumes because like gin I can handle, vodka all that, but the the licorice was fine. It was just the the it was almost like licorice soaked in Everclear was kind of what it made me think of. It was just huh. it was way too much i will also say in the french quarter the slushy shops oh. be careful <laughs> the hurricane slushies that is why i almost broke my toe and ended up walking back to my hotel barefoot oh, in the french no. quarter because <laughs> i came out of antoine's and just fell right off my shoes so, <laughs> so yeah i went to the the, oh. the oldest restaurant in new orleans and i'm wearing this little floofy short skirt and these platform shoes and i didn't fall down but I felt off my shoes, and then my shoes just went pop and just mm. broke apart. I saw those yeah. shoes. They were tall. I used to wear them all the time years and years ago. I wore them all the time. I had like I used to have Barbie feet. I wore That's all I ever wore was heels. But after I broke my foot, it wasn't really a thing anymore. But I wanted to be fancy on vacation. And, yeah, that was, that was a bad oh. idea. Platform oh. shoes on cobbled streets. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, not good. But it was a good time overall. So Mahogany See, remember, Jazz was awesome. I remember going to the slushy hurricane shops, <sighs> stops, uh, shops, picking my flavor of the two dozen they have in there, and they always <laughs> ask you, "You want an extra shot?" And I always said, "Yeah." No. <laughs> well, I had also already had a regular hurricane that day, and then after. When we when we went to dinner, I had two French martinis and a glass of wine, so I was already three sheets to the wind. And oh, okay. See, Matt was going to put me on his back and carry me back to the hotel, but my skirt oh. was so short that we were afraid. Of something. Yeah, so I just picked up my shoes and just started <laughs> marching through the corridor. And I walked into the hotel, and they're like, "How you doing?" I'm like, "Shoe emergency!" I <laughs> just kept walking. Yeah, it was. Oh, then I put on my swimsuit. What do you think? Cool. You've never seen a drunk person before? I mean, <laughs> it's the Olivier house in the French Quarter, so it's not the, oh. not the first time. Probably won't be the last, but no, it was oh. a good time. We had a, a really good time. It was just the midday clothing change because of the sweat was... I didn't take that into account. So. The sweat. <laughs> oh, God. It was... Yeah, it was like swimming, but... Yeah, my skin no, never looked so good as when I was down there. It was great, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, 
it, it's humid on, in June. That's a little cool. bit, yeah. But I got to achieve my one of my goals of leaving flowers at Anne Rice's tomb, like the goth girl that I am. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I thank everybody for the suggestions because everybody had suggestions for me. I, oh, yeah. I couldn't hit all of the places, but we did our best to, you know, yeah, get yeah. to where we could. I, I knew you wouldn't even get to half the suggestion. Yeah, but. well, and also because we had to go back to the hotel in the middle of the afternoon every day to just stay in the air conditioning. Yep. We would go out in the morning and then come back, and that's why we had to – I went looking for the concierge like three days in. I'm like, do y'all have a washing a laundry service? He's like, well, we don't have a, la have a laundry service, but we have an industrial washer and dryer. If you <laughs> want to bring me your stuff, just nothing delicate. I'm like, a okay. whole suitcase in there. I, yeah, he gave You're me a garbage bag, so I filled up the garbage bag what? and carried it back. And they washed. He offered to do your laundry himself. They he, he I guess he had one of the housekeeping the members. Of, they tossed it into the industrial washer and dryer washer and then the dryer and then brought just they stuffed all the dryers they didn't fold it right they just stuffed it back in the bag and brought it back to me yeah no yeah, yeah they wow it was yeah it's a i mean it's a rundown beat up place but the olivier house it was it was interesting it was a lot of fun so being run down and beat up is part of the new orleans <laughs> experience it, <laughs> and it's it supposed to be haunted but we didn't old, see old anything city. oh so. you didn't see well, you're no it was to pay attention well, seriously, it was bad, but supposedly it was, it's a, it's a former um, house of ill repute or what? Yeah. That's what it was in the 19th century. But excellent reputation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So apparently Madame Olivier haunts the place, but I didn't see anything. So, you know, but it was, it was a good time. We had a lot of fun. We had a crazy jazz, a jazz walking tour, tour guide the night we got there. So four hours we were with her. She put wow. us in her car because we were the only two people in the group. So she put us in her car. She's like the 70 year old woman, <laughs> jazz singer, musician. She's driving us around the corridor and then we're getting drunk with her on Frenchman Street. And then she took us back to the hotel. <laughs> it was oh. amazing. Oh, so she was like, that. you're my only two people. Let's get in your car and go. Yeah. Yeah. She Let's was, she took us all around the Louis Armstrong Park. And then she, we went across the street to a uh, bar right across the street that was she's like they serve really good mojitos so we went over there we walked around and then yeah she drove us around and was showing us places it was really fun so her name was holly berenson so holly yep Berenson. yep really good time a lot of bonkers people so <laughs> like the guy that was trying to shine match sneakers on bourbon street uh, y'all if y'all saw the video that, oh, I posted. that guy yeah, <laughs> yeah. dan I the famous got those shoes <laughs> <laughs> on your damn feet on world famous bourbon street yes it was amazing <laughs> we're dying so <sighs> good time all around nice so much gumbo so much red beans and rice <laughs> Oh man! Matt oh, gumboed his way through the city. <laughs> oh, the food. yeah, it was. And also, if you're ever driving, oh, I guess where y'all are, you're not gonna because we drove diagonal down through the state. We stopped in Alexandria at Pamela's Bayou in a bowl. It was excellent. Yeah, yeah, because it was a halfway point for us. So, oh man, I highly really? recommend uh, Halloween in New Orleans. Oh, I can imagine. It's that's a, what, yeah, that's what we heard down when we were there. It's a wild party atmosphere, but not as wild as Mardi Gras, which I think I would be kind of overwhelmed and frightened of. Yeah, no, that would be <laughs> way too much for me. But uh, Halloween, there's there's still room to walk the streets. There's still room to actually get a seat at Pato's or wherever. But there's crazy people doing nutso things and costumes. Um, and then the next day, is uh, is uh, All Saints Day, which is traditional day to get married. And they've got all these wedding jazz bands walking the streets, trying to get married. Like, That's amazing. On the street and see jazz come through. Yeah, yeah, that was God. The jazz was just. I mean, I've been a fan all my life. I got it from my mom, but sitting in Mahogany Jazz Hall and just because you're right there. The place is so small that you're right on top of the bands and just and there was one the first one, the first night that we went and the drummer, something was wrong with his cymbal. And so he got one of the waiters to go out to his car 
that was parked out in front to get his extra symbol. So he's got his car, and he's like unlocking his car while he's still playing. <laughs> <laughs> he brings it back. He gets all set up, and then he's setting his alarm again, and just keeps playing. It was, oh my god, it was so much fun. We met so many amazing people. It was so yeah. For Halloween, we were actually going to go to Salem, but with the baby Gigi situation, we're probably not going to do that now. So yeah, your your sweet old cat who is having some medical problems. That's that's rough. Yeah, a sentence I never thought I'd say is I'm taking my cat to the neurologist in August. So, you know, I'm I'm taking the wife to a, I'm taking Lex to a neurologist too. So maybe we can carpool. <laughs> maybe you could get group rates. Group rates. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, 14 year old cat. He's uh -oh. having some issues. So, but we're dealing with that. So, did we get to? I'm sorry, I completely derailed everything. Jack, what are you drinking tonight? <laughs> well, that's what I do. Nothing, nothing, <laughs> nah, you're fine. It's, it's, it's all good. This <laughs> this is kind of a, a humorous thing. I didn't think about it. I did not purchase these, um, but we did have a party and they had extras. And they're like, here, take, this, take these two six packs home with you. So I'm like, okay. So tonight, I'm enjoying a Corona. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey, I like a Corona and lime, so. So I got the lime in there too. Yeah, that's the whole bit there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying Corona. I'm like Bax over here, who's suffering through Corona. It'd be harder than I expected. <laughs> oh, dude, I've had it four times, and oh, each like oh. each flavor was different too, like completely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we have a scare where we might have it again. And my office has. Okay, so our entire call center is now like seven people uh, have just been in direct contact with their manager who ended up today walking out saying I have I have COVID. Oh so and they are in a room that's essentially about the closest we are together now in this box. This is oh. where they work, but with seven people. And uh, yeah, so my the uh, the media director and i are up in like a different building above a warehouse in a like nice air-conditioned bunker and so we're just like you do not come in this office no <laughs> <laughs> we cannot have this. It. yeah basically we're just like put the tape up on the door put a big sign that says leave on the you know, doorstep <laughs> but, uh, so that's 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 fun no but we we will see how this happens but it seems like there's definitely a resurgence in covid and yeah. like almost overnight resurgent of COVID because no real problems. I haven't heard of anyone I, I knew have it. And then I have 18 friends in our P group that I'm with. All of them across the nation have it, oddly enough. And then fax goes down with it. And then four girl or four kids in um, Lex's <clears throat> dance group have it. And I probably have it now. Damn. So we'll see. I, I don't know how I got it because I'm antisocial. I don't see anybody. Uh, I, I work, you know, 50 feet away from anybody else in my office. Facts. Um, Facts. I don't go to anything social. You have but to I stop licking door doorknobs. <laughs> Did I what? You gotta stop lip licking doorknobs. <laughs> I, I know you like the taste of the of the of the copper and the brass. <laughs> oh, that sharp little bite. Doorknobs when hell freezes over. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's kind of how I when we got it uh, a while back. We we're just like we haven't seen anybody. Like I was out of I was out of work. Allie was out of work. We we're just like, how did we get it? Yeah, yeah, but, uh, it's so. blazing through. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> <sighs> All right. Well, I do have one bit of homework. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, got an email from Laura Meyer about the Kickstarter for the, um, the books, the Victorian costuming book. Mm -hmm. Remember we had her on a while back. Oh yeah. The, yep. The, uh, yeah. let's see. She sent the email on the seventh. What day was that? I don't, I time means nothing anymore. She sent it out last Thursday that the books will be shipped to her as of the 8th 
So they're set to hit here the 21st, and then she'll get them shipped out to us. So we sh- our books should finally be coming in, hopefully by the end of the summer. She uh, In the email, she had a couple of things about the cost. It was how much it was going to cost to get it done here. Um, and it was just who was she, the person she was going to use initially it's, because of the ink and paper supply issues. She had to do it overseas. So they're on our way. They're done. They're shipped to her. And... She'll be sending them out to us. They will now shortly. be stuck in a cargo container for about oh. the obligatory three months off the coast yeah. of California. Well, actually, uh, the oh yeah, no, you're right. The port in LA on the 21st. Yep. Yep. So, so either here and just in time for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a subscription little paper craft box that I get from China once a month from a sweet little lady named Rosie, and yeah, she ended up not being able to send us anything for three months because China went back into a lockdown. And I am shipped. bereft with also the steam, pe- steam chest stuff. And I have to apologize to, to Thax too, that I, I apologize not getting anything to you recently from steam chest. Um, we are reorganizing that as best as we can to get something big out for everybody who is a steam chest subscriber. So everybody be prepared for that. It's coming shortly. If I can get everything to line up. I wasn't terribly worried about it. I, I know you aren't, a... but you're a good friend. And I just wanted to tell you that, no, I'm not just taking your money. <laughs> well, thank you, Jack. You're welcome. Uh, I've been working on um, watch chains uh, for your, your scene chest subscribers mm-hmm. that I, I hope to get to you shortly. I'm like one short. I need to finish up on that. And then I'll just make it, make it a little longer then. <laughs> A little longer, yeah. See what you did there. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird time for anything for subscription boxes because everything that they depend on has to come to them first, and it's just and yeah, the logistics are a costs. nightmare. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a nightmare right now. So stupid, and I'm like, so I'm like, I don't mind waiting a couple months and then throwing it all in one box because for the price of one box, I can get more stuff in the box. For yeah. People. Versus trying to ship something once a month and having oh. so much just eaten and cost of shipping it to them. Uh, yeah. I hate shipping costs. I hate oh. the paper shipping. Like, yeah, Rosie just put everything on hold until she could. So our subscriptions were just frozen paused. until she could get it started back up again. Yeah, it was just. But the way she does it, each bo- each month there's a little calendar and I use those in my planner. So I emailed her. I'm like could you send me the calendars for April, May, and June? She's like, yeah, I'll toss them in the next box. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I've been getting that box for three years, so what? Oh, no. <laughs> He's been kidnapped. <laughs> or he passed out. <laughs> Falling backwards. Oh, no. Grab his camera. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, no. All right. Well. Well. Um, how are you doing? Oh, well, thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, I'm doing pretty good, honestly, from from everything. Uh, kids, kids feeling better. Uh, we have a, a Minecraft server up, and he's happy to do the new update. So he's all sorts of nuts about that. And uh, if I talk about it too much louder, he's going to come over here and start telling me all the start update things again. Filling uh, us all in on it. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh no. Oh, what is? Fax is. I mean, here. I'm I'm here. Are you You're okay? Right. My, my dog pulled my cords out and I'm dealing with it. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. It's all right. You're just nebulous white ball that pulses. Oh, oh there, there you he go. is. <laughs> Did you miss me? We thought well, you were we thought you were um kidnapped, kidnapped or passed out. And like <laughs> as you were getting kidnapped, you grabbed your you grabbed your uh camera and tried to like show your attacker, but <laughs> like in right. taken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Thax. We will find you. We have special skills. We have skills. <laughs> and they are probably very special. I am a librarian. I can do this. Wow. You know that meme, you know, you've been kidnapped. Yeah, the last show you watched, those are the people who are going to rescue you. That, that's Shoot. you guys. You too, right there. Oh, well. Oh, it's going to turn out to be some sort of like the mummy moment where we have our, we have our, our librarian. We have, we have the you know the guy with the guns and then we're just gonna have to find some some guy to be quirky in the background and yell a lot who gets into trouble and we're okay and then we'll, we'll go save our damsel in distress Facts. i have a best friend who can be quirky in the background and yell a lot i'll bring her along you should bring her on here 
<laughs> I would love to bring. Oh, sh well, Shannon, the one that oh. asked if we would. <laughs> that she said us if she could send us the marketing email. Yeah, for, put her on here for the Adoption Knowledge Associates. Yeah, she's. We'll, we'll have an adoption knowledge moment. She's a she's a very outspoken advocate for adoptee rights. So. Yeah. Well, I'm adopted, so it worked out well. Well, then read the the posts on my blog that she put up today. It's really oh, good. Hi. Yeah, she's she's been researching her journey and her master's thesis was on adoption narratives. So, yeah. Huh. So, yeah, I don't know. Take a look at her stuff and I could probably get her to come on here. I mean, it's not steampunk in any way, shape or form, but it's about, you know, stories and the stories we create for ourselves, you know. And that in itself is steampunk. <laughs> what else are we doing? We're creating stories for ourselves. Well, so, yeah, yeah. And, you know, how adoptees have to create their stories because they don't always know yep so they have to fill in those gaps so yeah, yeah. so i will you know like i said check out her stuff and you know we might be i probably get her to come on and chat with us i think you guys would like her sounds Ooh. great <laughs> she's pretty awesome so who else has homework well johnny says the chupacabra gotcha facts <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a boba <laughs> <laughs> is that really Thax or is that just someone in a Thax suit? <gasps> Skinwalker. <laughs> oh, I know. Hey, I've been in a Thax suit the whole time. You didn't know? <laughs> oh. He's, he's, he's secretly a little tiny alien that sits inside his forehead. Someone's just wearing Thax right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jack, you were talking about science stuff. Yes, yes science connection. I, I did find the uh, the uh, fog catchers that they're making in Morocco. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, that sounds fun. And an article that on sounds CNN. sounds horribly cool. A fog catcher. Like that. That it's almost that. like that <clears throat> scene in Stardust where uh, Danny. Uh, what's his name? Not Danny DeVito. That's the wrong dude. That's the wrong. De Niro. There we are. Robert De Niro. <laughs> Vito and De Niro. It's 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 the name. I'm sorry, my brain. I, I know the difference in the like when I said DeVito, my brain just like tries to stick him over there and it doesn't work. You're like the complete scene just, just does not work. But uh yeah, there's there's some fog catchers right there. Yeah. So these are just like they look like like bamboo poles with uh Nets. plastic woven screens on them. Mm-hmm. And the water just condenses on them and rolls down to the bottom. They're catching. Oh, wait, that's it. That's it. It's just, it's almost simpler than me going outside and getting condensed when I mow my lawn. Okay, was it what I had in my brain was like this. You were well, just working is a little different. Uh, more involved. Yeah, I was picturing right. like something like a Tesla coil like type thing <laughs> that, with water dripping down it. Yeah, workers are a little different. Let's see. Uh. Ah. I know there are ones like the one you're describing. I, I have them right here. If you want me to oh, share okay. in just a moment. Okay, let me get back out of this. Okay. All right. So essentially, it's like you took a basket and you wove it, and <laughs> it catches water. And what you do is you have a cistern. Oh, here's a good picture. You have a cistern in the middle, and so all these little pipes run down into it, and you have the shade to keep it from uh you know to keep kind of the direct sunlight off of it but i oh, hear you go and you have your cistern under which all the water piles down into and you can get to it and so and you have a collection a little collection um membrane here that like a sponge that'll drip it in so they're really cool and they're really easy and they come in all shapes and sizes and here's an actual picture of some setup and yeah all it is is literally that netting like they use on, I almost think it's the same type of string that they use for like hay bales. Uh, it's just woven differently. Is and it like so hemp they, fibers? Yeah, essentially. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of grabs it. And what it does is that it just needs something that condenses water. It'll grab water out. Mm -hmm. And then there's a bowl. And it just catches water. And these things can make 50, 60 gallons a day easy. And, and in air, arid areas. And cool. so, you know. Five or six of these can make a village do a lot of things. And they're cheap to manufacture because all it really is is just a bunch of sticks and some rope. Okay, yeah, see, that's net, what I was picturing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, 
I'm just thinking here's one in like an urban <laughs> making water. And so, you know, there's just a whole bunch of literal rods. It looks like bamboo or reeds as well, just wired together in a pattern. And um, like this one's just plastic. This one just, just has like a plastic wrapper in there so that it condenses inside the, um, the tube of plastic and it just rolls off into the bucket on the bottom. So the concept doesn't even need to be complicated. It just, you just basically, what you could do is make like, like a circle here and then like inside put sheets of plastic going like this. You just need a way to slow air down so that the, the water molecules have to bounce around and land on things. And then okay. once it does that, it slides down. Okay, I do have a question though. All right. What if, this may be a dumb question. I'm not, science is not my area, but what about evaporation issues? I mean, especially if you're in an arid area, is it going to collect enough before, especially if you're in a hot, dry area? Isn't, I mean, obviously they work. I'm just, I'm curious how the evaporation. So you do have to be careful in. because like this, like this one has an open bucket there. It's just kind of a symbolism. Um, like some of these earlier, let's see, where is it? Uh, sh -sh -sh -sh. Like these, they have, they have like an underground cistern. So, so evaporation. Just, okay. And this one actually has it where it's showing where it collects it here. And there's a pipe that runs down to a collect to an actual bin or a, okay. a water holding facility. So yes, uh, evaporation is difficult. These don't work great. Like in the middle of the day, but evening all the way through night, when you have uh, the warm, moist air settling, like that is the perfect timing for this. Like okay. dew, you're collecting dew. So the best <laughs> yeah. time for it's in the evening. And I'll admit, even here in Austin, I'll walk outside and there's not a cloud in the sky and there's stuff dripping off my roof. Yeah. So it's, just, yeah. it's just the temperature difference of the air hitting my roof is causing the water to fall out of the air. It was, it's causing it to basically dehumidify itself, to condense. And so, um, I don't know, these are, I don't know, this whole thing is just intriguing to me. And there's yeah. all sorts no, of it's different cool. designs. Yeah. I've and, never ever heard of that before. Yep, it's it is W A R K A water catchers, and but there's a, there's a lot of other ways to do this. Like you were talking about, they're fairly steampunk. You could easily have these all over an airship if you so desire to. <laughs> um, but I've seen. I'm trying to think of even what it's called. There's one running around right now all over my Facebook that. Essentially, build your own water catching. And essentially, it's this box, and it's got layers of plastic like this, with like a tunnel for the air to come in and out, one air and one air, and it has to like roll like this and just collects and condenses and then drips into a, a cistern. And so, um, it's fairly simple to manufacture and make. I think. Oh yeah, this is kind of like one. That's a really crappy picture, but this is a pyramid shaped one. Review of sustainable methods for atmospheric water harvesting. Wow. Okay. That's a dissertation. <laughs> but, and here's kind of a twofold one it's a dome for collecting dew and keeping it humid for your crops and greenhouse effect. That's really cool. That's cool. So, if you wanted to build a whole civilization around these things, that would be <coughs> pretty nifty. Well, you know. Soon. Who knows what the future is going to hold? <laughs> yep. But the, the other guy I really wanted to talk about first was this gentleman. Uh, it's uh, it's called The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, and it's on Netflix. And essentially, he built a DIY. Here's a picture of it. I'm trying to it, a DIY windmill, and his teacher at school had a dynamo on his bicycle, so as he pedaled, it would keep the light on. And he gave it to him, at least in the in the movie, he gave it to him so he could date his daughter or I mean, uh, his sister. And um, like it was a funny little moment. But and so he used it and he rigged it up to a windmill to power a water pump so that they could pull water out of the well from like 60 feet down because it hasn't rained in forever. And so he had to like cannibalize his dad's bike. And he was very happy about that. Let me tell you, because uh, that was their only mode of transportation. And so, but they created this windmill and it's a really good show. I recommend watching the movie. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely heart wrenching in a lot of ways. 
kind of showing the desperation of it. But he is now gone to school. He got like scholarships and has gone back. He now is a basically a big affiliate of finding alternative energy and water collection for for Australia. You know, Africa. Wow, my brain. <laughs> I have not drank enough of this to do that. I'm just tired. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, he's got he's got like all sorts of like college degrees now and uh, just millions of dollars flying, you know, funding going into bettering very rural environments in uh, in Africa. So, awesome. But I just like the story because literally a guy doing the Iron Man thing, building an electro you know, electric windmill out of garbage and spare parts. <laughs> well, I mean, needs must. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. And uh, just, he, and he learned, what well, he, he learned how to do it in the, like, public library from his school before he was thrown out because at age 14, because his parents couldn't afford to send him there anymore. And so he snuck it, like, his t teachers helped him sneak into the library so he could learn how to build this thing. And, uh, you know, then it goes from there. I always love a good library story. There you go. See, <laughs> see, it's a great library story. <laughs> good story. That's on Netflix. Yes. Okay. Sweet. Dax, were you able to focus on coming up with that. homework? Huh? Uh, I, I do have homework. A little. Um, a couple of things. Last Sunday. I believe, was Nikola Tesla's birthday. Oh. I don't know if you, you knew that. <clears throat> and I happened across on inkedmagazine.com or inkedmag.com, they have a collection of Nikola Tesla tattoos. Really? I can share. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. And uh, uh, they're pretty cool. I mean, I don't have any tattoos. Is this going to do this the whole time? Don't do that. Oh, no. You must uh, do this on Instagram. Because I hate that. we're we'll gatekeepers. <laughs> I, I hate Instagram. I'm sorry. I think they are terrible. Uh, this is useless. Fine, okay. then I won't add you as a friend on Instagram. Whatever. Good, because <laughs> I don't. I never check it. I apologize. <laughs> Those are... Because I'm, I can't show you any of them because I know Instagram, it's so annoying. I go look Aww. up like spaceship tablet online, it and it's all Instagram. All up and it was great. Well, if you Instagram. if you go to Google <laughs> Images and hit Tesla tattoo, you'll probably find them. Yeah, probably will. I mean, yeah. just those three there are, are freaking those fantastic. Are really cool. With undead Tesla raising the dead with electricity, like that needs to be a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you could just yep. do it to Google. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> but there's just the, the, the article was really good. It had All a really varied, uh, number of really highly, uh, high quality tattoos. Uh, some of them were, you know, classic where some were, were very, uh, um, different styles of art. Uh, they were really, really, really cool. The photorealism is beautiful. Go back up, though. I saw something. Else. Hang on. Um, no. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Is that a Tesla versus Edison up there? Go up. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> it oh. is. Oh, that is amazing. So I met someone who's like, I'm pro Edison. And like everybody in the room just like cumulative Ooh. gasp and looks over at him and he's like holding his hand up and he says purely for the sake of reason that there is too many people who are not for te there are too many people who are for tesla and not enough for edison someone's got to be the bad guy no no that's we really have plenty cool. of bad guys we don't need we don't need another bad guy <laughs> no someone's got to yeah well you know he, he was a that was his decision we, we never didn't like him anyway so that's like yeah. an escher I love that. That's like an Escher Tesla. Yeah, yeah. It's... With text behind it, that's beautiful. Wow. I saw a number of these with like double eyes. I don't know what that's about. Because he's not human. <laughs> he, was... I, he just went home. I kind of doubt that. But uh, among the ones I saw on the Inked Magazine article, 
<clears throat> quite a few of these had these these double eyes. It's there must be a reason. There's a story behind it. I just that I, yeah. I mean, I I know who he is, I but I don't some know. Sort of esoteric, yeah. Not in a wink or something. I don't know. Oh, I like that one. <clears throat> wow. Just like all kinds of wild stuff. Oh. <laughs> so I, I uh, that's cool. Yeah, spent a good few minutes checking out that article. I will link it. I always like to see a good tattoo. Let's see. Boop. Boop. Oh, one. it's because it's like a Doctor Strange thing. Oh, what, oh, like oh. a Tesla oh. Doctor Strange? Make you know, mash mashup, up, I guess. Okay. I don't huh. know. That's the 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 double eyes thing. I'm pulling up immediately. So outside of like demon stuff it could be demon stuff tesla has been sort of co-opted co by the uh by by esoterics and and weird uh practitioners of of well, All he was of art. magic and stuff because he, he's got a lot. He says a lot of weird things that I don't understand. Well, he was a weird. <clears throat> I mean, well, not he was no, a he was weird. He was, weird. <laughs> he was a very distinctive individual. I mean, there was a whole lot going on, but he also people thought he was weird because he wanted to provide what broadcast power. He wanted everybody to have free power. You know, it was and that's yeah. you know that's crazy. You know, this is capitalism. Capitalism. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, let's go with Edison, you know. And now we're like here in Texas, hundred years later, going, "Hey, you know that like that free electricity sounds really nice, right?" Now. I would just like to be on the grid right now, on the national grid right now. Wirelessly, that would be great. My brother moved to East Texas. He's on the national grid now, you know, and we're still here. So, well, I don't know. Where in East Texas can you be on the national grid? He is in Marshall, which is like fifty miles from the Louisiana border. No, because that's where we stayed. We drove the. It's, it's like three hours from here. We stayed there overnight and then made the, the five-hour trek to New Orleans. They yeah, just ran an extension cord over so they could say, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Yeah, they are real close, and it's a little <coughs> tiny, tiny town. Yeah, very small town. So, it's out near uh, Deadwood, in East Texas. Yeah. So yeah, because we do have a Deadwood, Texas. In case y'all didn't know about that. It's not no, the, now we need, now we need yeah, to there's a Deadwood, Texas. As far as I know, it's a dead town, but it's still there. Yeah. <laughs> a, little, a little more honest than some. <laughs> kind of a ghost town, but. Also, since I got this COVID thing again, I was thinking <laughs> about the uh, flu pandemic of the turn of the century. 1918. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> how. We were just beginning to understand the concept of germs uh, not not too long before that. And I ran across this article. Yeah. Add this to the stream again. On uh, the SmithsonianMagazine.com. The woman who fought to end the pernicious scourge of kissing. Oh, no. New understandings of how disease spread informed Imogen Richton ill-fated 1910 campaign to ban a universal human practice. Wow. Oh, no. She is really reaching. We're not just going to ban alcohol. We're going to ban everything. Kissing. <laughs> yeah. Good Let me read night. the first couple of paragraphs. Imogene was seized by disgust and terror standing in a reception line at a women's society event in Cincinnati in 1910. She watched as the hostess approached, welcomed each of the 30 or 40 women ahead of her with a kiss on either cheek or the lips. If only I had something to show that would prevent my being kissed, she thought to herself. A mask. <laughs> so already I find this interesting because this is not a practice that we generally observe anymore. Yeah. yeah. She won. <laughs> Uh, a middle-aged mother of two with a deep-seated fear of germs, which we have a lot of people with deep-seated fears of germs now. Uh, Might Richard be well found long, long since convinced her husband of the pernicious health risks associated with promiscuous kissing. I'll reserve judgment on 
the, the state time, of their marriage. <laughs> a woman of Rickon's class would hardly go a day without encountering a smattering of smooches. A peck in the mouth was the standard greeting between female friends, as common as a handshake today. The Cincinnati soiree, with its blatant swapping of bacteria, <laughs> gave you the final straw for Rickton, who over the next year and a half spearheaded a short-lived and largely unsuccessful national movement to abandon the practice of kissing. <laughs> oh, wow. That I is... mean, I, my, me and my friends, not as much now because pandemic, but we've always like kissed each other on the cheek when we say, you know, when we hug or, but there's no <laughs> swapping of. No mouth to mouth. Uh... No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> you know. So here's, here's the thing. If you wear a mask, it keeps back the whole idea of, you know. Pernicious germ swapping. <laughs> That's one. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just thinking, like today, if you wanted to get people to wear masks, it's just like you know, just 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 not have anybody near your face. Do you want to be kissed? <laughs> no. Yep. Especially around a bunch of other dudes. <clears throat> so as it mentioned, her movement did not uh, did not go over. No. She had hundreds of acolytes, mostly women. Um, <laughs> It, it fell flat. But what I find interesting is uh, the social historian uh, who's researching her says, yeah, she's basically right. Kissing is filthy. <laughs> you shouldn't do it. Well, the reason that kiss, like the whole, like what they're trying to find out is why animals and people like exchange saliva or kiss and such things is to like share bacteria in a, con a, in a, con a more contained environment because if you have bacteria in your mouth which means you're, you're fighting you're already fighting it so if you kiss somebody else it's already a weakened version of that bacteria so therefore you have a better way of improving your own immune system especially if you're hanging out with these people way to suck the romance out of kissing i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> I mean, outside of that, that's the only thing I could think of. Like, that's that's one of the things I've run into on on like reasoning for actual like kissing. Um, it evolved as a way for us to kind of inoculate each other as a group. Yeah. I mean, you can eat local honey, get the same effect, but kissing is more fun. So I yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we developed a lot of practices as we were becoming who we are so there's a probably a whole sociological study you could do on yeah but it's, it's something that's across all mammals too like the act of grooming well yeah i mean yeah you know cats dogs they all take care of each other usually i mean brax tries to take care of Gigi, and Gigi just gets mad and yells at him so. and we know we know uh, Thax's dog all of likes us. to groom likes Thax, to make sure yes. that Thax is well cleaned make sure he's that, all scrubbed that, that mustache of his <laughs> Well, I'm happy to report that dogs cannot get COVID. Actually, but as I'm, as I'm recovering, Jack, do you want me to come over? <laughs> a little, what she a little peck. Y you know. Help you out. Inoculate each other. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> stock up. <clears throat> you can swish first. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, thank you, Vax. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> that was something to keep in mind tonight when I tell my husband to stay away from me. <laughs> no pernicious germs swapping. I, I remember uh, my grandparents, uh, since you, you were suggesting that her not kissing her husband would indicate that her, their marriage was <laughs> on the rocks. My grandparents had I separate didn't say beds. anything. <laughs> they, they slept in separate beds in, in their bedroom. <clears throat> That was just normal, I guess. Yep. For some, I, you know what? <laughs> that gets into a whole conversation about people's relationships that I am not going to venture into. But yeah, I mean. But the, what the social norms were. Yeah. Were a bit a bit different. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's one reason you hear about, like, back in the you know, 17, 1800s, 1600s, all of those, like, prince and princesses things came into my room because there literally was, like, three rooms in between each of their rooms to do anything well but we're also talking about a system where women were getting married and expected to have children but not expected to enjoy, enjoy it enjoy themselves necessarily if depending on their station in society so or so that, they could have the 
privacy of having <clears throat> each other's not having having other people without having to worry about other things going on too. You know. So there's like, a whole lot of whole lot the, of gender the political politics. marriages were a little more open as I understand it in some cases. <laughs> For was, him, usually, oh, like oh, I said, yeah. that is a completely different subject that we can we can discuss. We can discuss Victorian sexual mores next time if you want. <gasps> because <laughs> it was there's a whole lot going on the victorians yeah. that the we the different cult the cult of motherhood the the cult of death that they the cult of motherhood and death i mean sometimes yeah <laughs> okay i'm interested this is this is what we're doing next time what, okay. the victoria the weird victorian <clears throat> obsessions spiritualism you know all of it oh you mean the modern times <laughs> I mean, it's coming back around, but yeah, yeah. yeah. everything it's a weird time. Vogue. <laughs> Always comes around in vogue. What like is somebody? Were... Somebody on Twitter the other day said, "I know history repeats itself, but I didn't expect the entire 20th century to repeat itself in two years." I know, <laughs> right? Okay, so here we are. Literally, like, if you just go back to 19, you know, 1900s and move forward with 2000, moving forward, we're kind of already in that 1920s point where, mm -hmm. oh, look, we have a pandemic, or we're going to getting over a yep. pandemic, right into a war. Uh, well, also right out of a war. Yeah, right out of so, a war, you're leading into another war. And the so. depression. So, yeah, I guess I need to get my flapper skirt, get myself ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> so just you better, you better at this point in time, you just need to change your skirt on a weekly basis, depending <laughs> the, the well, length. Well, I mean, I, I didn't really change my clothes on a daily basis, but okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just talking about like the length of the skirt, depending on the economical. Oh, just the economics because the economics are doing well skirts get shorter just get one with drawstrings and yeah. raise it lower. It's, i actually those, those, have one in there it's a steampunk skirt that does that yeah, just, just grab a whole bunch of those the, the wind sheet the window things you pull the lever on it you know <laughs> depending on oh venetian you, blinds you, yeah venetian blinds go look up you know look up, oh look uh, stock market's cratering you just like pull the ripcord let it drop funk buns over yep <laughs> Hey, look, AMC is running. Pull the string. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> oh, we are coming up on <laughs> power. <laughs> Did everybody get their homework in? Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have been noodling around on the Patreons uh, oh. and have added a couple of new levels Ooh. for people who are interested in promoting their small business because I... I I, uh, I posted that in, on Patreon, and and at least one person said they would be interested. So, uh, if you'd like to become a patron at, at any level, we would very much appreciate it. It helps us uh, pay to uh, host the podcast. Um, but now you can also get your your website mentioned and do a little burb for your for your website, and also at a higher level, we'll, we'll run a whole advertising commercial. For yeah. you on on the podcast there is no low we're willing to go for you <laughs> well no i i, I I'm yes that that's joke. true but <laughs> i also wanted to uh make sure that we're, we're assisting our friends who are running small businesses such as fairtreasures.com uh if you're looking for uh ren fair costume uh fair treasures is an excellent place for and, and, and to some degree, steampunk uh, pieces in there. Uh, Kitty, who you've seen on the show, has a has her own business, FairTreasures.com. Take a look at that. Yeah. Uh, we also want to thank uh, Jenny and Ryan Shaver uh, for be, being patrons, and Rita and Lawrence Allen, who are listening now, and uh, they're they they've been our, our biggest uh, followers. I really appreciate it. You can find us on Facebook at Texas Steampunk Connection if you're not uh, watching us right now, or email us at Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com. Uh, our podcast is at Texas Steampunk Connection.podbean.com. This episode will be posted on Friday. Uh, we're on Twitter at TX Steam Connect One. Uh, Blue Stocking helps us out over there. And then, uh, our YouTube and Rumble accounts are managed by Jack with his Steam Chest subscription box. Uh, our music is brought to you by Zapsplat.com. All right. I always want to like say that too. Like, Zapsplat. Zapsplat. <laughs> Blah.
<laughs> and thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, always enjoy seeing you guys uh, posting. I get to see your your comments here, and uh, we try to reply to you on the show. Uh, do you any of you guys have anything else you want to add? Oh, <laughs> did y'all see the James Webb telescope picture? Yes, my husband's been showing them to me. <laughs> okay, okay. As long as someone has. A lot of little blinky lights. Yeah, it's all over Twitter. <laughs> like some of the furthest galaxies ever seen, which I'll admit I'm like looking at it going, that's a really cool picture, but it looks like a Hubble picture. So I was expecting a little something more. There's a whole argument on Twitter about the Hubble versus the, the James. Oh, the, no, yeah. well, James Webb is far superior, but yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of like the Hubble can see like this far. What we're looking at, is like this far over here, but it right. looks the same as here. So it's kind of like so I can see turtles here, and now I can seeing... see the turtles way over there. Yeah, we're seeing the turtles like <laughs> way turtle. over there. But uh, so I'm like really impressed with it. I'm I'm waiting to see more because I've been I've been reading up on the James Webb Telescope since it was like initially started in like Popular Science magazine. And so, so was my husband. It. Yeah, Matt has like, been all over it. Yeah, <laughs> like I was talking to my uh, father-in-law about this kind of. He's like, "Yo, when when I was growing up, we had like five pictures of space. That's what we had. <laughs> Uphill in the snow. Yeah, and then they had like the moon landings, which was fantastic. But we were basically like five images of the planet from space. And now you go online, and there's like new stuff posted every day by Twitter." From space agencies or <laughs> people on their own goddamn telescope. We were watching a thing the other day. This planet there, so it's like a it's like a a, a Jupiter sized planet, like orbiting the sun, like touching, and like they were talking about oh, and like anywhere from now and ten thousand years is is the thing. It could explode into a supernova, <laughs> and so there's a camera watching this thing. And we were watching it thinking they were like, oh, it could go any moment now because there's a lot of activity. And so he had it running downstairs all day, <laughs> just on the side monitors. And I'd go downstairs. He sees like little bloop. It was like a little gray and black thing. And it was red, just kind of like morphing like this. But you could distinctly tell what it was. But um, he's like, blown up yet? Nope, not yet. <laughs> I'd be like making coffee. I'd look over at it. You'd see it get a little bigger. I'm like, oh, oh. And then it's like going back down to just like orbiting again. I'm like, oh, darn. But, <laughs> so I'm, I've been happy with that. That's been fun. Good. <laughs> there is oh, wait, Let's wrap it up. Left handed <laughs> turn at the very end. It's okay. <laughs> Until next time, everybody. Mind your Mind gauges. Your Mind your gauges. Good night. Night.